Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to tell you about the casting porosities. The casting porosities are of two types, internal casting porosities and external casting porosities. The internal casting porosities are seen within the material of the casting and may at times be exposed on the surface, whereas the external casting porosities are seen on the margins of the casting. The internal casting porosities include localized shrinkage porosity, hotspot porosity, pinpoint porosity, gas inclusion porosity, subsurface porosity and micro porosity. The external porosity includes back pressure porosity. Let's first start with localized shrinkage porosities. The cause of localized shrinkage porosity is insufficient molten alloy. The insufficient molten alloy may be because of casting shrinkage which is approximately 1.25 to 1.75% for gold alloys and about 2.2% for base metal alloys. It may also be caused because of a long and thin screw which restricts the amount of molten alloy. Low temperature casting also may lead to localized shrinkage porosity as because of low temperature there might be premature solidification of alloy in the screw. To prevent the localized shrinkage porosities, we must make sure that there is a continuous supply of molten alloy to compensate for the casting shrinkage. We can add a reservoir with the base metal alloys and we can flare the screw at the point of attachment to the casting with the gold metal alloys. Both these will provide for the extra metal at the time of shrinkage. We can also reduce the localized shrinkage porosity by increasing the screw diameter and the recommended thickness of the screw is equal to the thickest portion of the casting and proper casting temperature should be followed. This animation shows an example of localized shrinkage porosity. The molten metal enters the mold and the metal starts to solidify. Ideally, it should have solidified first at the margins and from there it should have progressed towards the screw. But instead, since the temperature of this mold is lower than the recommended temperature, the screw solidifies first, restricting the entry of the molten metal into the mold to compensate for the shrinkage while setting. Now because of this, when the metal in the mold space solidifies, the junction of the screw and the mold is the last to solidify. And it is this point where the porosity is seen. The next porosity is the hotspot porosity and it is caused by the impinging of molten metal or molten alloy on the wall of the mold. Because of this impact, the temperature of the mold wall rises and the metal here solidifies later than the metal adjacent to this spot. And it is usually caused because the screw is attached at a 90 degree angle to the wax pattern. Hotspot porosity can be prevented by attaching the screw at a 45 degree angle to the wax pattern. Since the screw is attached at the 90 degree angle to the wax pattern, as the molten metal or molten alloy enters the mold space, it directly hits the opposing wall of the mold and because of this the localized temperature rises which is indicated by the red color. Now after the mold is completely filled and the metal starts to solidify, the metal adjacent to this hot spot, this red spot would solidify earlier as compared to the metal at this particular spot and because of this there is no additional molten metal that can compensate for the solidification shrinkage which leads to the formation of a porosity here. And this porosity is known as hotspot porosity or suck back porosity. The next porosity is gas inclusion porosity. The gas inclusion porosity and the pinpoint porosities, they both are caused because of the same reason. And the reason is incorporation of environmental gases into the molten metal. The recommended procedure is to melt the alloys in the reducing zone of the flame. But if because of some reason, instead of reducing zone, the oxidizing zone is used, then atmospheric gases like oxygen and hydrogen tend to get incorporated into the molten metal which further may produce gas inclusion or pinpoint porosity. To understand this, let's first see the flame. The flame has the innermost zone which is known as the mixing zone. This mixing zone is the coolest zone and here the atmospheric gases mix with the fuel that is the acetylene or the propane. The next zone that is outside the mixing zone is the zone of combustion. This is usually green in color. And this is the zone where combustion of fuel takes place. This zone is cooler than the reducing zone. The next zone surrounding the zone of combustion is the reducing zone. The reducing zone is blue in color and the temperature at reducing zone is the highest of all the zones of the flame. The outermost zone is the oxidizing zone. It is yellow in color and the temperature is lower than the reducing zone. The molten metal along with the dissolved gases enters the mold and when the solidification starts, the gas remains trapped within the molten metal and it fails to escape because of which after the solidification this trapped gas is seen as the voids within the material of the casting and these voids are seen throughout the casting. These are known as gas inclusion porosities. The next porosity is the pinpoint porosity. 
and the reason for the pinpoint porosity is same as that for the gas inclusion porosity. The difference between gas inclusion and the pinpoint porosity is that in the gas inclusion the gases are trapped whereas in the pinpoint porosity the gases try to escape through the surface of mold creating the pinpoint voids. In this animation you can note the gases dissolved in the molten metal enter the mold and as the solidification starts these gases they escape through the surface creating the pinpoint voids. To prevent such porosities we should use the proper zone of the flame that is the reducing zone. Also we can add certain elements into the metal like zinc. Zinc chelates oxygen and thus it can prevent contamination with the oxygen. We can add palladium. Palladium combines with hydrogen and thus it prevents contamination with hydrogen gas. The next porosity is the microporosity. The microporosities are very small in size, they are irregular in shape and are seen within the material of the casting and they may be distributed throughout the casting. The microporosities are caused due to low casting temperature and due to low casting temperature there is a rapid solidification of alloy which leads to tearing away of metal and this tearing away of metal leads to microporosities. To prevent the microporosities proper casting temperature should be followed. This animation shows the formation of microporosities. The molten metal enters the mold and since the mold is at a lower temperature Instead of solidifying from the margin towards the sprue, the entire metal solidifies simultaneously. And since the entire metal solidifies simultaneously, the shrinkage does not sequentially shift from the margin towards the sprue. Instead, the solidified metal, it shrinks away and during shrinking it tears away from the adjacent metal and because of this tearing, microporosities are created within the metal. The next porosity is the subsurface porosity. Subsurface porosity is created by the turbulent flow of the molten metal into the mold which traps the air within the mold and due to simultaneous solidification of the metal and the trapped air these subsurface porosities are caused. The cause for the subsurface porosity include faster entry of molten alloy and cooling. Usually this results from the short and thick sprue. The subsurface porosity can be prevented by controlling the rate of entry of the alloy into the mold. The subsurface porosity is reduced by increasing the length of the sprue and also by decreasing the sprue thickness. This animation shows the formation of subsurface porosities. The sprue as you can see is very thick and also it is very short. So because of a larger sprue, when the molten metal enters the mold, instead of a lamellar flow, it is a turbulent flow. And the turbulent flow causes entrapment of the air within the mold. And when this entrapped air solidifies with the molten alloy simultaneously, it results in the formation of subsurface porosities. The next porosity is the back pressure porosity. Back pressure porosity is the external porosity. It is seen at the margin of the casting. It is caused when either the base of the investment is thick or the investment is very dense. In case of a thick investment, the distance between the mold cavity and the surface is very great because of which when the molten metal enters into the mold, the air that is present within the mold cannot escape through the base because of which the molten metal cannot completely fill the mold which results in an incomplete margin and this is known as back pressure porosity. In the another case the investment material might be very dense and since the investment material is very dense it again prevents the air that is trapped in the mold to escape through the base. This animation shows the formation of back pressure porosities. The molten metal enters into the mold and the air that is present within the mold tries to escape through the base but since the base is either too thick or is very dense, it fails to escape because of which the air is trapped at the margin of this mold. The molten metal fails to flow in those margins because of which a rounded margin is formed and this rounded margin is very shiny and the height of the casting is short. This is known as back pressure porosity or incomplete casting. To prevent the back pressure porosity, recommended base thickness should be followed. The recommended base thickness for GBIM is 6 mm and for PBIM is 3 mm. GBIM is gypsum bonded investment material and PBIM is phosphate bonded investment material. So the sprue length should be adjusted according to the length of the casting ring so that the base of the investment remains 6 mm from the margin of the wax pattern in GBIM and 3 mm for PBIM. In case of dense investments like phosphate bonded and silica bonded investment materials, vent sprues can be attached to the margins of the wax pattern. These vent sprues provide the path for the air in the mold to escape through the base. That's all friends. I hope you like this video. If you really find this video helpful, please like, comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.